Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Richard. I hope you guys are ready for praise and worship. So everyone, let's get up on our feet and get ready to dance and sing along.
Is it love? If it was, am I living it? What? Do I live in it? Yeah. So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste the sea. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith there in the life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living to death.
pray after me. God, we thank you that you love us and that you are with us and that there is nothing in this world that can take us from your love. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, high knees, high knees. Yeah. Hands up, hands up. Jump and jump. Let's go. Come on, break the sweat. Break it. Yeah. Hey, guys. Woo, hey, guys. Right now, this is my uh, workout instructor. Welcome to MKids Online Service. Woo, woo, woo. I'm not out of breath. At all, you can no. tell, right? Yeah, it's just, that's the wind Woo! in the room. It's the wind. There's it's, a lot of wind. It's very fit, you know. It's yeah. in perfect shape. I'm getting in shape for winter. Yeah. Rah! Come on. Right? Thanks, mm -hmm. Teacher Uel. You're welcome. So anyway, Teacher Uel is going to help us do something awesome. Yeah. The so offering. Over to you, bro. You just took my words, man. But it's cool. It's cool. All right. <clears throat> Let's do it. So, guys, today's offering is coming from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. And it reads, go ahead and read it. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Ooh, I love that verse, guys. You know why? Ooh, you love it too? Yeah, man, it's awesome. It's awesome, right? Yeah, there's a lot of water in there. Yeah. I need, I need a drink. You, you, oh, we'll get your drink just now. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> so, what this means is that the generous soul, meaning someone that loves to give a lot, will be made rich. Why? Because when you give a lot to God, God is going to make you rich. He's going to give you so much more than you could imagine. And when it says, he who waters also be watered, it means he who blesses, meaning you, if you bless other people around you, God is going to bless you as well. Because he loves to see that. Yeah. Alright? Awesome. Now, if you're giving today to either the offering or the classrooms, the instructions on the screen right now. So you can get someone older than you, be it your brother, your sister, your guardian, or your parents to help you give today. So, from me, the fitness instructor, Teacher UL, and the fittest man on the planet, Teacher J, we say enjoy the service. Come on, clap your hands. Welcome, kids, to today's online service, and you're hanging out with Teacher Merez, and I'm chilling with... Teacher UL, aka Man of Steel. And Teacher Jeremiah, aka King and Foom. Hey, wait a minute. Why do you have my name? Because it's nice. But guy, it's my name. But I like it. Oh, guy. Okay. Alright, guys, so we're going to be continuing our series. Living by faith. faith. Okay, and today we're gonna be taking a journey into the lands unknown. Okay, so since we're going on a journey to the lands unknown, we need to bring some things with us. About two items. Teacher Marez, what two items would you carry with you on this journey? Alright, so I'm definitely gonna carry my blankets in case it gets really cold. Yeah. Okay, that's right, that's right. and my two teddy bears in case I get lonely. Oh, I have teddy bears too. And teach you well, what would you carry with you? Yeah, what would I carry? Well, I'd carry a bow and arrow. Why? For hunting food. Oh, smart, yeah. Smart, smart. smart. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And then. I'd go and capture Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so we can bring the food. Okay. Teacher right. Jay, yeah. what more serious things would you carry? Okay, since you asked, I would bring water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta drink water, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. first time. Yeah. And you're gonna love this one. I would carry my PlayStation 5! Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, no. No. But guy, you have my name. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you what. Mm. So you guys, along with Teacher UL, if you want to come with me on this journey so we can play PS5, you gotta answer this riddle. Yes. 
Yeah. Here it goes. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys. So what, what goes, goes up, but, but never comes down. Here is a clue. It's like a birthday. Have you guys figured it out yet? Yeah. Shout the answer. Let's hear you. I hear you. Can I say the answer? Can I say the answer? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. A frog. Uh, you're right. No. Joke. It can be a frog. But it goes up. It, it, then it, it goes, goes down. down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Since you're so smart, what's the answer, my race? All right. So the correct answer is your age. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you get older all the time. Mm -hmm. Your age doesn't actually grow. Yeah. Okay. So now wow. we're going to be looking at a person in the Bible today. Okay? okay. And this person's story is found in the books of Genesis and from chapters 12, 12 15, 15, 17, 17 21, 21, and 22. Now, this guy is called Abraham and he's married to a lady called Sarai, and they're both from the land of. Okay. So they're both from the land of Ur, spelled U R, and God actually asked Abraham yeah. to actually in to actually go on a journey. So now let's actually see how we went about with this journey. Come on, clap your hands. All right, kids. So now we're going to go into a Bible story, and it's taken from Genesis. And then we're going to read it from chapters 12, from 1 to 4. The Bible reads, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in, all, and in you, all families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed. Amen? All right? So, God, God is speaking to Abraham and he's just actually asked him to start a journey. Now, Abraham has to pack up his stuff. So he takes everything with him. He takes his blankets, he takes his possessions, and he has to move to a different land. Think of it this way. If, if you were asked to move, let's say, from Lusaka to, let's say, a town at the border with Tanzania, that's far, right? Okay? And this must have been quite scary for Abraham. Why? Because he's going to go to a place where he knows nobody, he has no friends, there's different buildings, but Abraham listened. Abraham trusted God. Abraham had faith in God. And guess what? He actually departed. The Bible says he departed. It means he started off. He just actually obeyed what God had said. Okay? But we notice that Abraham just did as God, as God said. And what's interesting is that he was 75 years old. Man, that, that means Abraham was like super, super, super old. But he still had faith. He still believed what God had told him. And God had promised him what? To make him a father of many nations. Now this promise is coming to a 75-year-old guy. And he still believed God and went ahead and moved. So let's, let's go a little bit deeper and see how actually Abraham went about in this journey. Alrighty, boys and girls. So we're going to continue on the journey with Abraham and his wife. So remember, he's 75 years old. This is grandpa age. Do you know any old people? And I bet you he was tired from all that walking. Because the example is they're moving like from Lusaka to a place near the Tanzanian border, like my uncle Mares had said. And they're walking there with no map, no cell phones, no GPS. So anyway, let's pick up the story from Genesis 15, and I'm going to read from verses 1 all the way to 4. You guys ready? Let's go. So the Bible says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, and I will reward you exceedingly. Right? And then verse 2 said, Abram said to the Lord God, What will you give me, seeing I go childless? 
and my heir is from the house of Eliza of Damascus. Then Abram said, Look, you have given me no offspring, not an heir that is born in my house. Then verse 4 said, Behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This one shall not be your heir, but one will come from your own body that shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside, and he said, Look now toward the heaven, and count the stars. Have you guys ever gone outside at night to count the stars? How many stars are there? A lot, right? So imagine, God made Abram a promise that he would have not just one child, but he would have many descendants, like many family members born from him, as many as the stars. And why did God do that? It's because he wanted to remind him every time it was at night and he looked up at the stars, he remembered, God has made me a promise. So, what do you guys do to remember the promises that God has made you? You know why we have the memory verse? It's because it's, it helps us remember the promises of God that he set to us in his word. You guys know they're written to you, right? That's why we do it. So let's go on on this journey. So now, God wanted to make sure that Abram understood that God was going to do what he promised. So he made him a partnership. Do you guys, can you guys think of examples of a partnership? Hand, shima, sugar, water, lemon, lemonade, right? Those are good partnerships, right? Juice, water, anyway. So, a covenant is like that. It's an agreement. It's a partnership. It means two people are going to come together and it's going to be for their benefit. Kind of like when we eat food, it's good for our body and it's good for our stomachs. So that's what God did with Abram. Now this story is going to get super interesting because God is going to do something that's going to be known as a miracle. Why do you say that, Uncle Jay? It's because Abram's not 75 years anymore. He's now 99 years. So stay tuned and the story will continue. Come on, clap your hands. Hey guys, ready to continue this Bible story? Yeah, I'm enjoying this journey, man. Okay, so remember, Teacher Jay, in the previous story, said that Abram was made a promise by God saying that. I will give you many descendants, you know, many, many descendants, right? So you know what God did to ensure that Abram and Sarai would believe him? Because they were doubting, like, in our old age, a child. How? This is what he did. He changed their names. I know, right? Like, imagine if God came to tell you, like, yo, I'm going to change your name. I'll be like, ha, lay it on me, God, give it to me. I want that name you got for me. Yeah, so... He changed the names from Abram to Abraham and from Sarai to Sarah with an H, okay? Sarah, yes. Now, let's pick up the story from where we left off, okay? And see how Abraham and Sarah lived after this. And remember, every time someone calls them Abraham or Sarah, they'll be reminded, oh, God says he's going to bless us with descendants, you know, we're going to have a child, yeah. So, the story comes in from Genesis chapter 21, from verse 1 to 5, okay? You can read it. So, it goes like this. The Lord went and he visited Sarah. Knock, 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 you know. And he kept his promise and ensured that Sarah became pregnant with Abraham's child, all right? So, she was pregnant with his child. And she gave birth on the day God said she would give birth. So, God kept his promise to the exact moment everything he said would happen happened he, she, he gave, she gave birth on the day he said that she would give birth and it was a son okay and Abraham named his son Isaac anyone can guess how old Abraham was when Isaac was born anybody anyone no you guys aren't even close can I tell you all right cool he was a hundred years old Yes, a hundred, man. I mean, do you know that's a hundred years old? I don't, I mean, I wish I did, but I don't. But I mean, one, zero, zero, guys, three digits. 
a hundred years old. And like, guess how old Sarah was? Hmm? Hmm? 90 years old. Yeah, 90. Do you know somebody that's 90 years old? I know a few. I know a few. Yeah. I wonder. I don't know. I think I want to make it to 90 as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Isaac was born when Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90. Now, do you know how long it was they had to wait till they had their son from the time that God came and spoke to Abraham? It was 25 years. They waited till 25 years before they had their son Isaac. Imagine. So God kept his promise, which just doesn't matter how long it takes, God will always keep his promise. It's sort of like when you see a nice phone, or nice shoes, or a nice doll set, you know, like, hey, a dolly! Oh, PlayStation, you know, the new PlayStation 5, and you're like, Mom, Dad, get that for me, please, please, please! You know? And it takes a long while, but eventually, one day they surprise you, and boom! They get you that PlayStation 5, that new phone, that new doll set, you know? How do you feel? Aren't you just happy, like, oh my word, that you just jump in with joy and whatnot? Exactly, that's how it was for Abraham and Sarah. They were so happy that finally we have our son that God promised to us. All right? Cool. Now, the Bible story doesn't end there. Ooh, we're just getting warmed up. This is just half time. <laughs> so now we jump to Genesis chapter 22, okay? We read from verse 1 to 8. So what happens here now? This is sometime later on. You know, Isaac has grown up. He's a young boy, you know, playing around like you and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> So, the Lord calls Abraham, 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 and he says, yes, Lord. And he says, and uh, the Lord says to Abraham, take your only son, the one you love the Lord, Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah. So Moriah was a land not too far off. Okay? It, wasn't, it wasn't that far. And, he's, and the Lord continued to say, go to the land of Moriah, and I'll show you which mountain I want you to sacrifice your son Isaac as a burnt offering to me. I know, right? Like, whoa, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You blessed me with my son and now you want me to like, like, I'd be like, you want me to sacrifice my son? Like, whoa, whoa. It's kind of like when your parents get you that new doll set, you know, this cute dolly, new PlayStation, or new phone. Then later on, like some time later, they come to you and like, yo, uh, so you see, Remember that phone I got you, or that PlayStation, or the dollies I bought you? Yeah, um, I'd like you to give them back to me. How would you feel? Terrible, right? Would you want to give them back? Probably not, right? Yeah. But see, Abraham, Abraham was different. He didn't say, no, God, no, I will not do it. No, uh -uh, I refused. No. Abraham was obedient. He listened to God because he had this great faith and trust in God. And he said, yes, Lord. And so the next morning, Abraham woke up early in the morning, and stretched, you know, brushed his teeth and whatnot. Remember to brush your teeth, guys, every morning, okay? Yeah. So he did that, and then he got his donkey, prepared it, and he left with Isaac and two of his servants for the land of Moriah. So they were on that journey for three days, you know, and on the third day, Abram saw the mountain that God wanted him to sacrifice Isaac on. So Abram prepared the wood, put it on Isaac's shoulders, and he told his two servants, Remain here with the donkey. My son and I will go up there to worship the Lord and offer a burnt offering. So Isaac and Abram went, you know, they're walking up the mountain, climbing it. And then Isaac asked his father, Father! And Abraham was like, yes, son. And Isaac was like, we have the wood, but where's the sheep are going to offer the bread sacrifice to God? And Abraham said, God will provide, my son. God will provide. So finally, they got up onto the mountain where they needed to be. And Abraham prepared the place, and then he put the, fire, the wood in place where he was going to offer the bread sacrifice. And then he got Isaac. And then he put him on the wood, you know. Imagine that. If he put the wood and then he tied him. So your father's tied you like, what's going on? I'll be freaked out. So 
After that, Abraham got the knife out, you know. Isaac was on the pile of wood, you know. And Abraham was ready to sacrifice him to God as a burnt offering. And just as he raised his hand, the angel of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham. And he was like, I am here. And the angel of the Lord said, Do not harm your son Isaac. Now I have seen that you truly fear God. So Abraham now looked around and then he saw in the bushes a sheep stuck in the bush. Its horns couldn't get out of the bush, you know. So Abraham went and got the sheep. They took Isaac off of the pile of wood and they put the sheep there. He got the knife out, you know, did what he needed to do, stabbed it. And then he offered it as a burnt offering with Isaac to God. And they worship God there. Now you may wonder, why would God ask Abraham to sacrifice his only son, the son who God promised to him? Well, it's because God was just testing Abraham. He wanted to see if Abraham truly feared him and if Abraham truly had faith in him. And Abraham did. And God rewarded him greatly for that. God doesn't take what he blesses you with. In life, God will just test you so that you can go grow more in Him and trust Him more because He loves you a lot. Alright? Awesome. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed that Bible story. Wasn't it amazing? I know I did. You enjoyed the journey, right? That was an awesome journey, right? Yeah! Okay, cool, guys. Well, from me teaching you, well, I'm going to just say, let's get on to the next part of the lesson. Come on, clap it. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I certainly know that I did. Now, you should like people like Sarah and Hannah, who had God fulfill their promises and had faith in Him and had a good relationship with Him. You just have to do one thing, which is ask Jesus to be a part of your life, to be your friend. All right? And it's, it's very, very simple. You just have to pray and ask Him to do it, okay? And He will willingly come and be your friend. Would you like to do that if you haven't done it before? Okay, cool. Say this prayer after me, all right? Say, God, thank you for giving Jesus to us so that he could wash our sins away and so that we could be a part of your kingdom. Dear Jesus, I want you to be my friend. I thank you. And I love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wonderful. So, if you prayed that prayer with me, I got two books we'd love to give you here. One is for the ages 3 to 4, and one here is for 5 to 11. Now, to get these books, ask an adult to go to kids at MLFC. Dot org. And what they'll need to do when asking for these books online is put in your name and your age and we'll have them given to you. Awesome? All right, fantastic. Come on, clap your hands. Hey, hey kids. kids, we're here with a very special announcement. Mm -hmm. All right? Are you guys ready? Yeah. I bet you thought we forgot, hey? Uh huh. One, two, three. Happy birthday! <laughs> no, 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 not that. No. All right. So happy birthday to you if you had a birthday this past week or have one this coming week. We want to say happy birthday to you. We love you so, so much. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Come on, clap your hands. Here we go.
That's it.